Good morning everybody, Cam back here. Just on a quick ride to test a couple of things out. One is a, well not really a book, I was going to say a book, but it's not a book, it's um, a PDF that I was sent um, from a chap at the IAM. It was sent out to all of us just to have a look through. And it was a it's a, a booklet, if you like, called Full Control. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, and it's all about the physics of motorbikes and how to get the best out of your steering and all that kind of stuff. And I realise I've kind of got to the point of doing all of my steering subconsciously, so I thought I might give it a whirl. Mud. Mud everywhere at the minute. Um, so I'm going to go through, there's about eight or ten exercises to do. I'm going to go and try. If you want to see a video on that, I can uh, I can put one out. Let me know. Um, I'll probably record it anyway, just in case somebody's interested. And knowing me, I'll probably put it out there anyway because I'm like that. I always do videos, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, that's not the thing that this video is about. This video is second part of my ram mounts video. So this is the first time I've been riding with a ram mount attached to my bike. There it is, with something in it. In this case, an old iPhone. Picked my old one because I didn't want to uh, break <laughs> break a good phone. <laughs> if this one breaks, I'll be a bit disappointed because I use it to control my exercise bike, but um, I won't be as disappointed or upset as I would be if I broke my, uh, my main phone because well, I broke the glass on that before and it was 200 and odd quid to get it fixed. So I don't know what it would be like to drop it off a bike at 60 miles an hour or so. So the ram mount is now on and working. You can see I've mounted it just uh, just there, just on my right bar where I put the uh, little ball last time. Um, I've been riding for probably done about five miles and uh, well it seems rock solid you know, it's not the phone is not by any means slipping about in there the um, the arm itself is exactly where it should be the only problem I've got and you might have just seen me do it is this it's got this kind of 30 degrees of movement in the arm itself now I can see a benefit to that because the um, because of the way the arm is made, it's in these two halves that obviously bolt together around the two balls. Because of that, there is a restriction to exactly what angles you can use. It's not 360 degrees in every direction kind of thing. There is a limit because if you imagine that the, at the minute the slot is vertical here, if I was to turn it round 90 degrees, not to learn it, do I get nod back? Nope. Misery. They don't teach you anything nowadays, do they? <laughs> um, yeah, if I was, if I turn that 90 degrees, you can't then tilt it forwards and backwards because that slot is not in the right direction. So you've, you've got complete movement, but you have got a heck of a lot of angles that you can get it to. If I want to bring the sat nav that I've got here, the phone I've got here, left a bit, I can take it left a little bit, but then this slot gets in the way, this bit here and the arm starts to foul it and if I turn the whole arm 90 degrees and twist it that way the phone is pointing upwards not towards me which makes it a bit awkward because every time you've got a sat nav instruction you have to kind of go Ooh, oh yeah <laughs> so not perfect I suppose if anything um, I should have got the uh, the arm that has uh, a, a twist in it there's one that I don't know if it's a, an arm in its own right or if you get two arms and there's a little bit with just two balls on that lets you then twist everything wherever you want it to go but uh, to be honest where it is now is doing the job so I'm happy with it it's good and high which is good I used to uh, when I went to Wales last time went across to the world to see Kev and do the Welsh ride out I had a sat nav and I had my bag that I use as a tail pack most of the time I had here and I had a sat nav in the top pocket because it's got a pocket for a map or a sat nav 
but it was absolutely hopeless because you're kind of you're looking down you're taking your eyes off the road just to be able to see where you're going which is no good at all so in terms of that it's not bad not bad at all the only other downside is because I've got it on the phone I've got a sat nav that you can kind of prod at because it's on a phone I can't actually move anything because I haven't got a magic glove so I need to uh, find a magic glove or better some kind of magic finger anybody know of anything that you can attach to an existing glove because I've got a few pairs of gloves and I don't want to have to replace them all just so that the screen works so all in all not bad not bad at all still think it's overpriced though um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video because I've not actually gone back over it yet but um, pricing wise it is pretty horrendous and they make you pay for delivery which when they're charging you what they charge you is, is awful really the, uh, the little mounts, these metal mounts they are fantastic quality don't get me wrong but they were £18 each which is a lot the arm was about the same uh, sorry no I tell a lie no the arm was about £18 the mounts were about £12 each um, so between the, the mounts and the arms uh, was about £44 if my maths hasn't failed me today and then the X mount or the X grip X grip I must remember to call it that um, it did say on it. <laughs> uh, the X grip was £25, I think. So, you know, it's a lot of money. You can buy a sat nav for less than it cost to put the mounts onto the two bikes. So, it is, I think it's, it really is too expensive. Um, but I decided to treat myself because it had been my birthday and people had given me some uh, as I like to call them bike vouchers or as everybody else calls it cash <laughs> so some people have put give me some cash so that's what it went on uh, whether or not I would have done it otherwise I don't know but you've got to treat yourself for your birthday haven't you anyway so there's the mount so it's still solid still going tapping the phone at uh, 55 miles an hour very very silly <laughs> But it, it's doing the job. I think I've actually just tapped it enough to press the uh, button on the side of the phone. If you have got an iPhone 4, that's one thing you will find. Your, um, your mount, you've got to position it just right. Otherwise, one of the X grip bits will be over the power button. And if you do give it a knock, you can turn it off. Idiot. Actually, lock the back wheel up then. Just trying to keep away from people who approach roundabouts at stupid speeds. There's no way she was going to stop. Just a tiny touch of the back brake and that roundabout of course. Covered in diesel as always. So I locked up the back wheel. How nice. People eh? That takes me back to the, uh, the bit I started with which is this um, PDF thing, this full control. One of the exercises, slightly nerve-wracking because they tell you when you're learning to ride do all your braking in a straight line but one of the later exercises is all about using your brakes whilst in corners so that'll be interesting Anyway, that's enough from me, thanks for watching Ride safe everyone and I'll talk to you all again soon Screen back on again Actually it was me that tapped the button wasn't it? because he's there for on and off <laughs> my other phone has got a button on the side I think I might leave my full control practice until the roads are a little bit less greasy